Welcome and hello. This is a video lesson in EPA Swim. And in this lesson, we are going to be talking about objects, working with objects, that's adding objects, editing objects, deleting, moving, all things that you can do with an object. All right, let's go ahead and get started. What I have on the screen here is my swim. I'm using version 5.2. If you're following along in the PDF version of the user's manual, this is in chapter six. And if you are following along in the user's guide right here, this is uh, working with objects is what we're going to be covering. Let's start off by talking about the project browser. So over here in the left panel, there's project tab and map tab. If you click on the project tab, it'll list out all the different types of objects, both physical objects that can display on the map as well as non-physical objects. Those in order are title, notes, options, climatology, hydrology. Within hydrology, you have other specific types of hydrologic elements such as rain gauges, subcatchments, aquifers, snowpacks, unit hydrographs, lid controls, and then within the hydraulics category of objects we have nodes, links, streets, inlets, transects, and controls. And then we also have pollutants and land use within quality, curves, there's a number of different curves as well as time series, time patterns, and map labels. Let's go ahead and add some objects to the map. There's a few different ways to add a specific object. So for instance, if we were gonna add a rain gauge, I'll go ahead and open up hydrology, click on rain gauge, then I can come up to project and then add a new rain gauge. So whenever you have a specific object type selected over here in the project browser, and then you come up to the project menu, it'll say add a new, and then whatever that object name is. So if I click on sub catchments, I select sub catchments here. I can go projects, now it says add a new subcatchment. Another way to add an object is to click on that object type here and then click this green plus button. And once you do that, then you can hover around the study area map and go ahead and add in that rain gauge. There's another rain gauge, there's another rain gauge, there's another rain gauge. Also, I can click on rain gauges here and then project add a new rain gauge. I think I already said that. And then the other way to add an object is some of the objects are listed over here in the maps toolbar. So I could just go ahead and click on subcatchments, add a subcatchment, or here's the rain gauge button. There's another rain gauge. All right, plenty of rain gauges. Adding a rain gauge just means single left click. If we wanted to add a catchment, or sorry, a subcatchment, we would go ahead and click on the subcatchment button right here and then do single left clicks at each of the vertex points for that subcatchment and then right click to close the polygon. This is now our subcatchment. Just like rain gauges, we can also just click on subcatchments here, project, add a subcatchment, or with subcatchments selected, we can click on the plus button over here and that will allow us to sketch out a subcatchment. There's a number of different non-visual objects as well. So for instance, aquifer, which is the next one down. If you click on aquifer and then click on the add button, automatically you get the aquifer editor properties box. Now each different object has its own properties. So for instance, we can open up the properties for a ring gauge or a subcatchment. So we have different data right there. Snowpack is also non-visual as well as unit hydrograph. So this is what the snowpack properties box looks like. Different data because it's a different object. And then unit hydrograph, we click the plus button here. And here is the unit hydrograph editor. All right. Another popular object type is node. So if I close up hydrology and open up hydraulics, we now have nodes. Within nodes, there are a number of different types of nodes, junctions, outfalls, dividers, and storage units. So with junctions selected, for instance, let's go ahead and add some junctions. All right. Just a single left click right there. And then for links, let me close up nodes, expand links. Our options here are conduits, pumps, orifices, weirs, and outlets. So I'll go ahead and click on conduits, start adding a new feature, and then I'll go ahead and click, and then I'll just uh, double click right here at the end junction. My cursor here still is encouraging me to create another conduit at the end of this first conduit. See, I have number one already created up here. I'll just go ahead and do another one right here and double click. Now I have conduit one and conduit two. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click. That will stop the editing. If I also want to stop the editing, I can just click on this select object button, which now gives me the generic uh, mouse arrow cursor. I'm going to add one more conduit because I forgot to mention you want to start at the upstream end. 
and then single left clicks until you get to the downstream end. If I want to end this link at this downstream junction, I would just double click. I already said that. But if you want to cancel adding that link, you can either right click before ending it, escape key, or just use the arrow button. So I'm going to click the escape key and then boom, it's gone. Next is selecting objects. So if you want to select an object, you need to first make your mouse cursor able to select an object. So just go ahead and click this select an object button over here from the maps toolbar or you can go up to edit and select object. Then to select an object, there's two ways. You can either just do a single click and the object is selected. I can select a rain gauge or a junction or a conduit. Another way to select an object is over here in the project browser. So say for instance, I want to select a junction. I'll click on the junction category and then I can select the individual junction by selecting that particular identifier in this list box. Next is moving objects if you want to move an object uh, first of all not all objects can be moved but the types of objects that can be moved include rain gauges subcatchments nodes and labels so uh, the first step is to select the object which we've already talked about i'll move this rain gauge here and say i just want to move the object i can just drag it so it's just that simple i can move it <laughs> by a single left click and then drag Another way to move the object is to open up the properties box, which is right here and has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So if I wanted to move this over to the right, I'll increase the X value. And let me just get a general idea of how far to move it over. The X and Y coordinates are down here. So if I start here at 1268 and then change it to maybe 2500, let's go ahead and enter that data. So for X, I'll just say 2500. Now this one should move when I hit enter and yep, the rain gauge just moved. All right. One third and final way to move an object is from the project browser over here. So let's go ahead and move this one. This is rain gauge one to move this rain gauge. I could just hold down the one right here in the list box and then drag it onto the map. And then it moves just like that. This last method would be particularly helpful if you have a number of objects that you imported from a different project that don't have coordinate data yet. You'll see them in the list box, but you won't see them on the map yet. So you can just go ahead and drag them to the map. You can also convert nodes and convert links. So say, for instance, you added a node like a junction, but you want it to be something else like a full fall node. You can go ahead and uh, select that junction with a single left click and then right click to open up the context menu and then convert to. It gives you the names of the different types of nodes that are available like outfall, divider, and storage unit. Let's convert this junction to an outfall. And then boom, now we have our one and only outfall in our project right now. If we want to convert links, it's a similar option operation. So what we do is a single left click to select the link and then right click convert to. And now we have the option to convert that conduit to another type of link object, which our options are pump, orifice, weir, and outlet. So let's uh, convert it to a pump. Links can also be reshaped, not only converted. So if I wanted to reshape this link right here, what I do is select the link and then click on this vertex, select the vertex tool. And now it identifies the different vertexes within that link. So it looks like there's a start an end and then two intermediate vertex points. Another option for selecting vertex is going up to edit and then select vertex. I can also select the vertex for this pump link. If I wanted to change the vertex, I I can just go ahead and click on the different vertex points and then move them around like so. If I want to delete a vertex point, I can just right click and delete vertex and it's gone. Delete vertex, that's gone. If I want to add a vertex, I can go ahead and right click add vertex and then go ahead and move that around. And I can also delete all vertex by doing that. Delete all vertex. Okay, let me go ahead and add one back in here and basically change it back to uh, how I had it. Okay, something like that. All right, there's a number of ways to delete objects as well. So you can just quite simply click on the arrow tool, select your rain gauge or whatever object you want to delete, and then click the delete button and then say, yes, I want to delete it. Another way is to select your object. Like again, this rain gauge, right click, delete, click OK to confirm the delete. And we can also delete using the tools within the project browser. So this rain gauge number seven that I have selected, I'm going to go ahead and just select it here in the list box. Click the minus button. It's asking me if I want to delete and yes. And finally, the last way is to just select it from the list box and then click the delete button and again, confirm that deletion. I was only giving examples for the rain gauges, but you can delete 
any of the objects the same way. All right, now it's time to edit the properties. So with each pro object, we have a properties associated with that object. With this rain gauge, for instance, you can double click to open up the properties box. You can go right click to open up the properties box. And then you can also open the properties box by selecting it from the list of rain gauges or whichever object type you have selected and then clicking either double clicking that opens it up or selecting it and then clicking this edit button right here. The list of properties for the object selected depends on the type of object. So here we have the rain gauge data. If I right click properties, this is the properties list for the subcatchments. The PDF version of the user's manual in Appendix C has a full list. Uh, let me just go up to the table of contents real quick and then see, I'm looking for Appendix C, which is right here. Okay, Appendix C, Specialized Property Editors. So it starts with the aquifer editor. And what we see here is an image of the editor. And if you continue scrolling down, you get information about each of those properties. So a pretty lengthy and detailed description of each of these property editor boxes. All right, the next one down is the climatology editor. And then within that, we have a number of different editors like temperature, evapotranspiration, or evaporation, wind speed, snow melt, aerial depletion, and adjustment. So I'm not going to go through all these. Also in Appendix B, I skipped over this, we have the visual object property editor box, starting with rain gauge. So you can click on that and then get a list of the different properties associated with, well, rain gauges to start with. But then if you scroll down, we have the subcatchment. It gives you a full description of those different properties and what they mean. So after that is the junction, and uh, that's where that information is. If you're using the PDF, if you're using the user's guide that's built into the software, go help, user's guide. What you're looking for here is under reference and then visual object properties. So again, here's rain gauge, subcatchments, junction properties. And then the next menu item down here is the special dialogue form. And this is where we have aquifer editor, uh, climatology editor, temperature, evapotranspiration, and so on. So uh, lots of info there. All right, next up, hopping property data from one object to another. Let's go ahead and add in a couple of junctions. So there's a junction and there's a junction. Next, I'm going to add some property data. We'll call it junction 9 and junction 10, it looks like. I'm going to set the invert elevation to 120. So we have an invert. Elevation of 120 here for junction 9. For junction 10, it is 0. That's the default value. But if I wanted to copy that invert data from junction 9 to junction 10, right click, copy. Now I'm going to highlight junction 10, right click, paste. And now let's go ahead and check out those properties. Boom, elevation of 120 feet within this junction 10 with uh, just using the copy routine. Only data that can be shared between objects of the same type can be copied and pasted. Properties not copied include the object's name, coordinates, and notes, like for links, tag properties, and any descriptive comments associated with that object. All right, the last topic here is editing and deleting groups of objects. So say, for instance, we wanted to edit the invert elevation of these two junctions at the same time which is almost trivial, but say for instance, you may needed to make an edit to tens or 20 or hundreds of different objects at the same time. That can be achieved by going up to edit and then select region. And then what I do is go ahead and select the region here with single left clicks and then right click to stop creating that region. By the way, this same region editor tool is this one right here, which is, yeah, select a region. So you can go ahead and select your region. I've got my region. Now it's time to make an edit. I want to go up to the edit menu and then group edit. I can also group delete if I wanted to delete all the objects in a group, but I want to go group edit. And now what I want to do is select the junction because that's the type with tags equal to, it looks like that's some sort of filter. And then I'm, not, I'm going to leave that blank though because I want all the junctions. And then the property that I want to change is going to be the invert elevation. And let's go ahead and change that to 540 feet. Now I'm just going to be replacing it. I could also change it by multiplying the existing value by a number or adding a certain number to the existing value. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to 540 though. So I'll click OK. And then yes, this is just a confirmation. That should be done now. So let's go ahead and check that out. Yep, elevation of 540 and elevation of 540 right there as well. Let's go ahead and add maybe say 10 feet 
So I need to sketch out that region again, I guess. Okay, right click, edit, group edit. Again, we're gonna go with our junction here, and invert elevation. This time we're going to add to it and we're gonna say 10 and okay, and yes. Now let's go ahead and check out our invert. It's now up to 550. All right, well, that's it for this lesson. What we talked about was all things related to objects in our swim model, adding objects, editing, modifying, moving, and deleting.